Hello everyone and welcome to another C Sharp tutorial. In this video we're going to be going over um, properties, getters, and setters. Okay so let's take a look at our class again. So as we know our class is a blueprint and it is a blueprint of our um, whatever we're trying to make essentially. In this, in this case it's a car. So what are some properties of a car? Well their wheels would be considered a property or an attribute. Um, same with their seats, the color, the title, the make, the model. All of these things are properties of the car. They're, they're parts of the car that don't necessarily need um, specific logic um, ran for each of the cars individually. Um, they're just... Um, they're just properties, essentially um, data about the car. So how could we make this in our car class? So let's take a look at what we already know. And that is, whoops, whoa, that is making fields or variables. So we could say string um, title equals, well actually, we'll do, we can just say string.title, we can make it public, we can make an object, whoops, a new car, okay, and then we can say car.title equals um, my first car, and then we can run it, console right line and then we can say car dot title all right and this works just fine however this is definitely breaking some rules because classes should not know about other class variables or other class fields um, but they can know about properties so how do we do that then? Again, this is breaking, uh, this would be breaking uh, abstraction, which is an object oriented programming um, rule, technically a pillar, but we can go over that later. In fact, I will have a series dedicated to object oriented programming and how to incorporate all of, uh, all four of the pillars of object oriented programming into C sharp. But for now, Let's take a look at what we have here. It's this field, and we know that we can't do this. We can't make a, um, a global variable. So we need to improvise a little bit. So how could we get away with this? Well, what we can do is we can call a function, OK? So, hmm. so let's do this. We can say public string get title all right and then we can say um, return title and there we go now we have access to title we can get away with this we can put it wherever however we can't actually assign title so we're going to need to make another function for that we can say public string Oops, excuse me, public void set title. All right. Now, inside of set title, we would need, of course, some parameters or a parameter. And we can just call this value. Oh, well, value. Okay. So now when we call set title, we would get this value and we can just set this title now or the title to be the value. All right, so now with our title set, we can do this again. So we have our car. Um, we got to make this private because this can't be global. So we have our private title. Um, however, we can't just write line car title. We need to do, it would need to be get title. 
And we know that this will throw an error because right now it's not initialized. It would just fail. So we can say car dot, so whoops, set title. And now we can set it to whatever we want. So we could say my first car. All right, that's the title of our car. So this is the old way of doing this. Before getters and setters, um, this is essentially how you would do it. Um, and it works. And we can access this title without um, breaking object-oriented programming principles. Yay, so, but this is gross, unfortunately. Um, we have two separate methods working for one property, and that's, that's gross. So, what we can do is use a getter and a setter, or a property. Well, we can use a property which has getters and setters. So, let's do this. We can simply say public string. And since we already have a title, let's go ahead with type. All right. Um, and we're, we're actually still going to need a private. We're actually still going to need a field. So we can say private string type. All right. Under case, just like the others. Now, whoops. Now we can make, instead of our functions, we can make our property. So we can say type. Oh, we can say public string type. There we go. And in here, instead of having to um, write again other functions, we can just simply say get and then return. Uh, type and then set um, let's see type is equal to now here's a fun keyword I actually used this word for a reason because the keyword we're going we can use inside of a property is value and this refers to the value that is set to this property. So that is how we can use property. So let's take a look now. We can say um, over here, we'll just make this gross divider one more time. And we can say car, car two equals new car and car two dot type all right is equal to um, sports car and then we can say console dot right line and we can say car to dot type okay so let's go ahead and run this And there it is. So both of them work the exact same. It's just on here, it's written gross. And on under here, it is written correctly. In fact, we can still clean this up a lot. Um, but before I clean it up, one of the reasons why we'd have a setter, for instance, is let's say in order to enter in the type um, into the database, uh, the letters need to be lowercase. So we can simply say uh, to lower, um, just as some very basic logic. So this way we don't have to write a function that actually sets the text and formats it correctly. We can just do all of this in the setter. So when we run it, sports car. As you can see, it was originally capitalized. The first two letters were, and now it's all lowercase. So this is the value of having um, getters and setters. And of course, there's more things that we can do with this. However, this is essentially um, the concept. Um, 
it's very important. This is a very useful and important concept to know about properties because you will see this all the time in uh, C sharp programs. However, what you'll see more often is just um, basic properties. So um, let's actually take this. Let's say we don't actually need to lower um, all of the letters. Let's say this is all we need. You'll see it doesn't look like it's used because it's gray. However, we see it being used right here. So and right here. So what's the uh, what's the problem? Let's hover it and it says use auto property. So this is a really cool feature that is in C sharp. I think it started in C sharp three. I could be wrong. Um, but anyways, so all we need to do is write get set and then we can delete this and it automatically makes a private variable and does the getter and setter for us. So we literally just have to write one line. That's it. So now instead of having to write a private field and two functions, we just write one public property while still adhering to object oriented programming principles. So this is really good. Um, it's very, very useful, um, especially when we start looking at files and objects we get from the internet. Um, we'll see that this is very important and very useful. So, and there, there, of course, you see it working again as expected.